Amados. So, hello and good evening. I welcome you to the webinar Risk Management, Risk and Money Management and uh, the Leverage. Um, this is uh, Jens Lutz speaking and exclusively presenting this event to you for JFT Brokers. So, um, just first of all, very important, is everything fine in terms of the audio so can you hear me can you hear me well is there any um, scratching uh, or, or something um, since usually uh, we found together here in the morning meeting uh, via YouTube or in Germany we use a live stream and uh, there I have the chance to double check um, the event and I'm usually running this in the background so I can double check whether the sound is cool or not um, and uh, so here, I, I just do not know whether the sound is good or not. So if you could probably type in the chat box short, yes, everything's fine or something, that would be would be really nice. If you don't type in anything, well, I just uh, move on and uh, we'll switch uh, through the slides I've prepared um, on this topic. So um, the main reason uh, we we uh, find together to, to tonight here or in, to today in the afternoon here uh, is mainly due to um, a circular which was uh, sent out by the CISEC um, and issued here uh, on the 13th of November 2016 so already around two and a half months ago and um, the circular number 168 um, it covered an updated version of the ESMA's Q&A document relating to the provision of CFDs and other speculative products to retail investors uh, under MIFID. And uh, here um, also is uh, a topic then for, for, for JFD brokers. And um, so while I'm, while I'm introducing this, uh, here the risk disclaimer. And uh, one of these, um, yeah, one, one of the main topics in this circular was that uh, that uh, the 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 CISAC urged um, Cypriotic bro brokers to uh, reduce the default leverage to 50 to 1 for retail traders and um, just allow them to um, up this 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 leverage if they have enough experience here and. Um, to be honest, so um, as as you can see here uh, at the top uh, at the bottom of, of this this presentation, you can see while I'm switching over here to the first slide, the importance of risk of money management. So you can you can see a little introduction to, um, um, on on my person here. So I'm um, the founder of of Jenska Trading. I have uh, a lot of experience um, in this industry for well, I do not know something around 10 years I'd say. I worked uh, for for um, um, Daily FX before so you might when you may know Daily FX is the research arm um, of currently um, IG markets but before it was the research arm of FXCM yes you may love the, the broker which just uh, turned out to to uh, to um, or who was just banned by the CFTC NFA here from the US market and where we do, do not really know uh, whether um, this um, will probably happen here to the to the uh, European markets too, and um, the main reason was um, that they uh, that they um, um, promoted a no dealing desk while um, in the background trading against their clients um, via an, another company which uh, had some advantage here and uh, um, 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 having the possibility to get most of the traders volume here and then there was some kind of kickback deal and you might have you might have heard it you might have heard about this and uh, so um, it's uh, it's definitely true that um, I did not know anything about this but there were there were let's call them rumors or you, you had some some second guessing here so I'm also author of I'm sorry author of a, a best-selling trading book here in Germany that's called Forex trading and um, I was doing some research here and so the research I did here on this topic um, it also covered the, the the chances the possibility of getting a post trade transparency report and um, the, there was a very easy question here so the first part of this book covers um, what to 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 look at if you if you're looking for a broker and um, so the first thing um, which came to my mind was just imagine you're having I don't know 
500,000 to your name and you say, okay, I'm trading with this money, I put this in a brokerage account then and I trade uh, half a million here and um, I have a ticket size of something, I don't know, a million or if you're not considering the leverage a big problem for probably 10 million, I don't know. Um, and uh, then I said, well, usually you, you just want to know where your order was executed. And um, that was a very, thing, a very interesting thing here. Um, I just asked Dilling here, uh, in, in this case at FXM, I just asked them, hey, um, if I come up with such a request here saying, hey, I want to know where my order was executed, well, uh, would you give me such an information here? And they were, yeah, they were not answering this question. They were saying, hey, the partners are the only ones who know about this um, because of uh, whatever reason. And uh, so that was when I started to really uh, think that something's going wrong there in the background and uh, something I do not like. And um, I started to, to, to build up my own company um, during uh, or in my spare time. And then um, I split up with, with FXCM uh, last year around March. Um, my contract ended on the 13th of June. And um, I said the main um, focus in my company here are the columns on which my company should be built on is transparency and integrity. And um, as you may know, um, I'm offering a morning meeting here every morning at 10.30 a.m. GMT for JFD exclusively. And um, I was looking for a broker who is interested in uh, getting good research, interesting research for their clients and um, um, who would well, let's call it sponsor this um, this 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 event, and so that I can offer this uh, um, for free in the future. And uh, so, then you if you if you look for a broker here and you want to put in uh, put 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 transparency and integrity and in the uh, um, as the fundament, you, you consider this to be the fundament of your own company. You need a broker who uh, looks at these two aspects um the same way and the jfd brokers does exactly that so um, um, um jfd is in this case for example also offering and it doesn't matter how big your account is a post trade transparency report and you have the chance to just um find out where was your order filled um so if if um someone like like fxm for example would have offered this um after several time you would have found out that obviously there was some there's a good chance that, that there was always the same liquidity provider um, um, uh, here um, um, executing your trades and then you start to get curious so are they really that good and then you probably talk to someone trading at, at JFD and ask hey where are your orders executed and usually you say well all of these uh, brokers they should um, have the same liquidity provider somehow you know and um, then you start to get curious about this and then you start to, to, to ask questions but to make long things short, so all in all, um, it's uh, I as the founder of my own company and uh, running um, um, uh, a managed account here, thanks to an, um, a licensed umbrella from 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 JFD, which offers a, a JFD offers such an umbrella to me. Um, for me, as a money manager, as, as a professional trader, someone trading um, the money for the, for clients, um, it's very, very important to have a broker who is looking for transparency and integrity in the business model, who is offering post-trade transparency. And uh, as someone trading professionally, this circular number 168, and here the cycle closes, um, was 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 really welcomed since I said, well. Um, the leverage is one of the key aspects, the key components why uh, traders are profitable respectively or and or unprofitable and you will find out soon what I'm what I'm talking about here so first of all it's important to see everyone if beginner or advanced trader knows how important and adequate risk and money management plan is so no one um, who is who is around here no one will say oh I never heard about this um, this this topic so there there are some very interesting aspects to this so I'm I'm some someone who's also offering trading coachings and everything and if someone comes to me and says hey why how much do I need to risk on one trade I say well usually you hear something about one percent but this is not necessarily true since um, if you have a big advantage in your trading then why risking just one percent per trade not 1.5 1.8 two percent per trade okay so usually we'll say well but it, it means a bigger volatility in my equity curve. That's, that's completely right. On the other hand, it's not just about preserving the capital you have, but also making sure that you get the most out of your 
advantage you have. Um, on the other hand, if you do not have such a big advantage, I mean, it should be um, go with um, with no second guessing here that you shouldn't risk one percent, but probably just half a percent, probably just zero point four percent, and. Um, but all in all, we can say that, that um, every beginner or advanced trader knows how important an adequate risk and money management plan is. Um, reason, with a proper risk and money management plan, the chances of being profitable can be increased significantly. So usually this is what you hear in a book, but you do not know whether this is true or not. So you probably hear several traders saying exactly that, trading coaches, money managers, wh whoever you ask. Uh, you will always hear proper risk money management, the chances of being profitable increase significantly. And then you say, okay, come on, let's, next topic. Let's talk about, I don't know, chart patterns or something. But you just do not know why this is. And uh, that's one of the um, one of the reasons why I welcome, in this case, the chance here um, to, to, to hold the webinar and to talk to you um, on this topic, this, this use leverage, um, since the use leverage in trading plays a very, very important role here. And uh, this is something we want to cover here. And that's one of the reasons why I personally welcome what the SISEC did on the 13th of November 2016 here. So here's the issue circular number 168, subject, and under the third point, use of lever leverage, the circular says, Cypress investment firms, so the short version here is SIFs, need to design their trading systems in a way that offer their retail clients as a default the lower leverage limit determined in the leverage policy and give them the option if they choose to change the default to a higher leverage. It is provided that the lower leverage limit is reasonable and does not exceed the cap of 1 to 50. And by the way, this is this is enough. So just to give you um, um, an idea of, uh, by, by the way, I can, I can just... Sorry, uh, doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Um, I just try to 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 copy paste here. If if you're interested in more details, I can I can copy here the link and post it in the chat box so that you that you just can. Where do I have the chat here? Here's the chat. So here is the link. If you're interested in more details on this, but it's yeah. Well, it's not necessarily necessary that you read this. Um, so what I can say here, while I already um, have the, the, the next slide here on, this is long overdue, um, where I say this is as the, the, the following. So a personal, personal anecdote here. Um, I work as a trading coach, as already mentioned. So you can come to me and you can ask, well, could you please explain to me how trading works? And I try to, or I plan to, to trade myself. So, and um, I had a student that was, it's not long ago, probably six months. He came to me and said, well, I want to learn how to trade. And um, overall, you need to build a fundament here. So he was a very short-term trader. So he was a scalper and said, well, I'm, I'm usually trading in a time frame between one to 10 minutes. Um, that's how I feel uh, comfortable. Uh, I, I personally can't understand this, to be honest. So I don't feel comfortable to trade one to 10 minutes here. Usually my trades, uh, they have, uh, um, they have uh, a duration of something of, um, yeah, several hours up to one day if I have an intraday trade. Um, so, um, but everything is, is fine. If, if you say, well, I, I complain, I'm, I'm feeling fine with this, so this, this should be fine. Nevertheless, the mathematics or also the, the, the psychological side here um, or how to, to, to uh, capitalize an advantage you identified and to, to, to make sure that your trading overall is profitable in the long run. Um, it all comes down to the same mathematical, mental, whatever aspects. And so that was the main um, thing he came to me since, uh, yeah, he, he thought that I had probably the best, best choice here to give him exactly that, a solid fundament he can then build his trading strategy on. And then he said, well, or he asked, um, so I'm a scalper and I, I'm looking for a broker. So what, what broker do you, uh, you, um, uh, you use in your trading? And I said, well, I'm, I'm uh, exclusively working with JFT brokers, and that's, um, by the way, no coincidence. And I listed all those, those positive aspects. By the way, I was already trading with JFT brokers when I was an, uh, uh, when I was, when I was, um, an employee before, um, before I, I started my company. So just, just that you get an idea of um, how much I value the, the, um, the, the product JFD is offering as a broker. And um, so I said, well, JFD brokers, there are plenty of reasons. They are 100% STP DMA. They have no market-making license, um, not in, in CFDs too. 
and uh, since he was fr um, um, planning to 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 scalp the DAX, I said, well, um, then probably you should look for for JFD as a broker since you have no uh, um, um, minimum stop distance and everything. And he said, okay, well, yeah, I will have a look, a deeper look into into their offering. And then one day he sent an email and said, well, I'm sorry, I, I can't stop my trading there. And I said, well, what, what's the reason? Um, what, why, why? Just, just, just why? Um, and he said, well, they're they're just offering a leverage of 100 to one here in the DAX. And I said, um, okay. I'm I'm not getting your point. What, what's the problem with that? You said, yeah, I need more leverage since I plan to to deposit um, a small amount here, but I need to 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 get the biggest bang out of of this small amount I plan to deposit. I just uh, need a higher leverage. And I said, well, uh, two things here. So first of all, you can request a higher leverage. Um, it's it's no big deal. But I can um, start already here with one key thing you will learn. Um, here during during the first module you're you're uh, just booked um, the risk and money management um, I can tell you that after you ran through this um, through this module I can tell you that you do not want to use a higher leverage in your trading and that you do not need this anymore since this is one of the key reasons you'll become profitable in long term that you're capable of reducing reducing your leverage and using a leverage which is way below the average used leverage here in the industry um, and he didn't get this point and um, so that's that's a, a personal anecdote here um, why I personally welcome this step here from the um, um, SISIC in this case um, um, very much and um, so that's um, exactly what's written here so it's no coincidence that I as a professional trader money manager and trading coach urge my students to significantly reduce the, loose, the, the, the used leverage in their trading. Um, the reason I know that the reduced leverage, effective leverage by the way, so we're talking about, I will introduce this a little later, um, so we are not talking about the nominal le uh, leverage here, which is by the way exactly this 550 to 1, but the effective leverage, but, but those two, um, they, they uh, correspond very, very tight, they're very tight um, 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 uh, down to each other. So, a reduced effective leverage results in a high probability to increase the chances of long-term profitable, profitability in trading. And um, here, so that's that's a lot of text. Um, but I will I will go through through uh, through every every single point here. Um, so first of all, we need to make sure that we understand the. The, uh, the difference between the nominal and the effective leverage. So Circular 168 talks about the nominal leverage which can be understood as follows. So this is what the SISIC circular says. If a broker offers you a leverage of 50 to 1, it says that with a 10,000 euro account you could theoretically trade a position up to 500,000 units. So let's say for example, euro USD. So 50 times multiplied with 10,000, this is the account size, you get 500,000. So this is theoretically, since you, you do not um, take into account here that you need um, some, some margin on the account, um, you have the spread here, commission and everything, so purely theoretically. But in short, the higher the nominal leverage offered by your broker, the higher the theoretical position size you can build. So here, the example is a broker offers, offers you a nominal leverage of 200 to 1 and allows you to just deposit 2,500 2, euros in your account and trade a position as big as 500,000 units since 200 multiplied with 2,500, you get 500,000. Okay, so by setting the default leverage to 50 to 1 and, allow, and only allow clients who have a certain level of trading experience and are aware of the risks involved, um, the, reduces, um, the, 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 the reduced leverage um, reduces the potential, um, the potential risks and the risk of going broke for, for retail traders significantly. Okay, so this, what I just introduced, is, the, is known as the nominal leverage. So this is not the effective leverage I was talking about, but now let's come here to the uh, question, increasing the chances of being profitable, how can that be? So the so-called effective leverage comes into play here. So how is the effective leverage defined? The effective leverage here is defined as the position size you, tr position size you trade and you um, divide it by the account size. So just one example, if you plan to trade one lot euro USD, it's 100,000 euros, uh, 100,000 units, and your account size is 10,000, your effective leverage is calculated as follows. It's 100,000 
divided by 10,000 and you get 10 to 1. So, and now the question, how do nominal and effective leverage interact with each other? And here it's very, very simple. And you might now say, and last week, by the way, we had the, sim the, the same webinar here in, in German and someone was getting furious in the chat box and saying, well, I can't believe that you're saying that. If I say I don't use the leverage, I don't use it. Well, my personal experience says that at least 9 out of 10 do this. And I know this since I know that 9 out of 10 traders are unprofitable. And the main reason is the misuse of the leverage. And so what I said was, um, the higher the nominal leverage offered by your broker, the higher the chances that you use it. And it's just like giving uh, a box of candy to a five-year-old and tell him not to eat everything at once. Leaving the room, you, you give him the box and I say, well, um, but don't eat everything at once. And then you turn around, you leave the room. Well, what do you think will the five-year-old do? I mean, we're, we are all um, um, grown-ups, we're all adults, we know what the five-year-old will do. Um, I, I, I don't even think that um, probably someone who is, who is as also as we are is, uh, is, is not uh, eating um, um, the whole candy box here. Um, we just know that that's, if, if it's there, we eat it. That's just the way it is. And that's the same thing with the leverage. So if the broker offers you the chance to leverage your money, let's say 200 to one, um, you just do it. If you have the chance, you just do it. And um, is it, this is especially true the moment you're under fire, you're under attack. So um, you, this is very interesting. So there's, there's a trading book out there, very, some very good uh, trading books out there. Uh, one I definitely recommend to everyone. It's uh, Market Wizards from um, Jack D. Schwager. And that was the first one, um, the first um, um, a book he, he um, published, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the first one. And there was an interview with Marty Schwartz, and he's a, a Navy SEAL, a Marine, I do not know. Um, but he says, and he compares trading to exactly that, like being under attack if you're a soldier. Um, he says, well, you're just, you, you just lose everything there, okay? You get completely emotional. Just imagine you're, you're lying there somewhere in the dirt, in the desert, and then it's someone is shooting at you with a, with a, um, a machine gun. Like, like, uh, and you're, you're lying there, and then just think, okay, now I need to do exactly that. Somehow try to stay alive. Do exactly what they told you in your, um, in your, in your, in your military class or something. Um, and, and he said, well, I can tell you the following. I met so many people, they, stopped, they, 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 started, they started crying. And that's exactly what, what and, and he's completely right here. Um, I, I, I learned so many, pre, well, through, through the years, I met so many people. Let's say, uh, for example, the S&B. So I said I was a former employee of FXCM. So, and, um, so I was an employee during the S&B. That was the first um, hit that this company took. Um, and they nearly went under there, okay? They had to, to take um, um, a 300 million loan um, since uh, they offered their clients a no debit policy. Uh, and um, 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 that means, on the other hand, um, there were people who lost six-figure, seven-figure amounts because they were hugely leveraged against the 120 pack in Euro Swiss franc. And they started crying. They started crying. They lost everything on this trade. And then, and then they just deposited, let's say, 100,000 euros. So they, they lost 100,000 euros. If someone deposits 100,000, you would say, okay, well, probably he has some more money somewhere else, some, in some other bank account. But in this case, he not just lost 100,000, but it wasn't sad that, this, um, uh, that, the, that the debt he just, um, um, or the hit he just took, that it would, would have been forgiven for him. Okay, so he was he was something like minus 1.22 million, um, um, and and his account was 1.52 million. It was a minus of, of of two million euros, and you just lost nearly everything. Okay, it was forgiven at the end. It was forgiven, but initially people started crying since they just did exactly what was offered to them. They used the leverage which was offered to them. Since the moves here in this case in the Euro Swiss franc, they weren't they weren't that big. So it was small moves, okay? And 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 to to profit as much as possible from these small moves, well you have to highly leverage the positions. And this is exactly what they did. But they forgot that somehow the moment here the barrier at 120, the pack was 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 lifted and, and it's no barrier anymore there. That uh, there is the chance of getting a huge, huge down move here. 
and there's no liquidity out there, well, and that's the thing, you get the best, um, 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 the best price out there. And well, if the best price is 30 to 40% to lower and your position is something like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five million, let's say five million uh, euros with Frank Long, you're losing 30% on that. Well, that's counted, that's 1.5 million, okay? And, and that's, that's when, when people start to cry. And they usually say, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not eating this, 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 this box of candy at once. I just don't do it. Well, my personal experience is you do exactly that. It's not. It's not. It's nothing which is which is a bad thing since it's 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 human. We are humans, and and this is just something which is which is human. Um, but nevertheless, you have to make sure that you that you see those risks, those personal risks you 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 have in your trading, and that then um, you take um, something you do something against it. Okay, so that's that's the only thing you can do here. If you if you um, if if you like it or not, but at the end you you have a high chance of of using your leverage if it's, if it's offered to you. And my personal experience, as said, is that if the nominal leverage offered by the broker is extremely high, you're highly likely to take this um, as an advantage. You try it as an advantage. So here, this is a chart I present to my um, to my students, and um, it's showing the um, share of profitable traders here based on the used leverage. It's, um, it's a statistic from a, from a third broker, from a third broker party. Um, and as you can see here, to, to just explain this to you, um, here at the x-axis you have the leverage and you're, here you have the share of profitable traders. And as you can see here, the higher the leverage is, the higher the effective leverage is in your trading, the the lower the probability that you're that you're a profitable trader. So here during this time frame, there were 18 percent um, of the uh, considered traders that were profitable when they used the leverage which was higher than 20 to one, or in this case 25. I'm sorry, 25 to one. Um, while if you started to reduce your leverage here and you went below five to one. Um, the chances of being profitable increase significantly. So 40% out of the um, traders here you use the leverage of lower than 5 to 1 they were profitable in this time frame. And I can tell you that is usually um, true for, for, for nearly every um, uh, for, 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 for every time frame. Um, there's another chart I presented in my, my book in this case that was um, on average winners and average losers and um, so you, you might, might have, have read the book from Kahneman, and, uh, it was just Kahneman, yeah. Um, he was, uh, the, the topic was on, on, on uh, loss aversion and uh, the book, um, its name is um, Slow Thinking, Fast Thinking, I think. It's the English, the English topic here. And uh, he presented a very, very um, interesting uh, topic there, something he found out with his... Um, with his colleague Amos Tversky, and they were, or Kahneman in this case, he, he won a Nobel Prize for this. So um, oh, I'm not sure whether he won it for, for this topic on risk aversion, by the way, but it doesn't matter. So, but definitely um, very interesting here was that he found out that um, usually you, you uh, the, 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 um, the, the, how is it? How is it the joy, the, the joy you feel um, when you when you win something is um, around half as uh, as 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 uh, uh, makes you as half as happy as a loss of the same size um, uh, makes you let's call it angry or um, makes you feel bad. Um, so the 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 um, the um, 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 the ratio here is around one to two, so which means you need to earn um, four euros to come over a loss of two euros. That's that's uh, I'm, I'm in fact what's what's said there. So uh, to overcome a loss and the the bad feeling you have by losing two euros, you need to make four euros, and this is um, something you can also find if you look at the average winners and average losers. So the um, the ratio here is really one to two around. And um, so, and, and this can be found in several time frames. So what I would say here is, if I, if I take this information and put it on this chart, I'd say um, it doesn't change the long term. So probably you have one, two percent uh, um, 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 fluctuation here, but usually this shouldn't change in the long term. Um, so the, 
the, the, the key um, um, fact here based on this is, or, or what you should take out of this chart is, the lower the effective leverage, the higher the chances you are profitable. So for example, let's take me as an example uh, here as, as a professional trader, money manager. So the average um, uh, um, effective leverage I use in my trading is around two or three to one. So let's say the highest is around three to one. So I'm significantly below five to one here. So it's not sad here, um, or not, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm highly profitable, but with the information you have to this point, you can uh, get an idea of how likely it is that I'm someone of these guys making money out of trading. And um, this is exactly what this chart perfectly shows. And if you're aware of that, well, you definitely do not want to use the leverage which is uh, um, um, offered by your broker. Respectively, what you try to avoid is even if the broker offers a high leverage, you, don't, you just do not use it. Um, and since we know that if the candy is out there, you will grab the candy, well, the SISEC with their circular and saying um, we reduce the default leverage to 50 to 1 max here um, is um, yeah, highly welcomed. And now you might say, well, what's the reason for that? Um, and somehow it doesn't work out that well. So I, I prepared it and uh, somehow um, the, the somehow the, the, the PowerPoint does not play uh, the way it should. Okay, but let's come here too. It comes down to psycho psychological reasons once again so here the, the final question is whom of us is more likely to make a move which does not correspond with our strategy. And here I've preferred something. So just imagine we have an example here, a 10,000 euro account at JFD Brokers, you have 200 euro margin per one th at 10,000 units euro USD and we both trade an identical strategy here. The risk per trade is 100 pips to take profit is away 200 pips. So risk reward is 1 to 2. Um, and uh, now the question is, just imagine you use an effective leverage in your trading of 20 to 1. So the position size here is 200 units based on uh, the input I just delivered. You can say here 10,000 units, you multiply it by um, 20 and uh, this means you trade up to 200,000 units, Euro USD. The pip value here is right now um, circa um, 18 euros. So now it's me. Um, I'm using effective leverage of 5 to 1 here. The position size is 50,000 units here, 5 multiplied with 10. So the pip value is around 450. So now we both go long EURUSD, just imagine that. We just go long without uh, any technical reasons or something. We just go long EURUSD. The position loses initially 60 pips. So your balance now is um, 4,000 euros are blocked, which means you, you haven't lost it, but it's just blocked since you, you can't use it in your trading, since you have to hold this as a, as a margin here to, to um, um, keep up this position which we're just talking about. So the floating P&L is, um, by the way, there should be a minus. So it's minus 1, uh, 1,080 euros. And so the free margin you see in your account is less than 50% of what you initially deposited here. So it's 10,000 minus here, 4,000 blocked minus 1,080 euros. So the, the remaining margin, the free margin you have is 4,920 euros. So now let's have a look, have, I'm sorry, let's have a look at my balance. So the margin is 1,000 euro, it's blocked, so it's not lost, it's just blocked. The floating P&L after 60 pips loss is 270 euros and the free margin here in this case, is 10,000 minus 1,270, so 1,000 plus 270. So the remaining margin is 8,730 euros. So now the question, who must, whom of us is more likely to make a move which does not correspond with our strategy? Um, just imagine you just lost 10% of your account while I was losing, which is, by the way, a lot to me, 2.7%. Um, what do you think? What will happen here? Just imagine the following. Um, this, this initial drop of 60 pips does not necessarily mean the, stop, the trade gets stopped out. So it probably increases the chances that you're getting stopped out. But all in all, we can say there's still a chance that the market turns around and runs in our direction here. And we will make a profit on this trade. So the question is, what do you think if you just lost 10%, nearly 11% of your um, account here, what do you think will, will happen here to you? Do you think you will probably think about your trade again? Probably say, okay, um, I'm not willing to average the loser, in, average the loser here, but I'm probably, um, I'm probably saying, well, 
I cash in the chips here. I take the loss. It would be, by the way, not the worst choice. Um, the worst choice would probably be to say, okay, I take away my stop. So what stop? I, I don't need it since I want to, to uh, increase the chances of not getting stopped out. So you're working with kind of, let's call it a shadow stop or something. So you're not using your stop anymore, but you just say, well, I wait um, and the market will turn around. You will start to hope or something. Um, you might say, well, this does not happen to me. Um, my personal experience is that most of the people um, do exactly that. They start out with a plan. They have a stop put in the market. Um, they are aggressively leveraged. And at the end, they say, I can't afford to lose this. I just lost 11%. The market will turn around sooner rather than later. And if the market reaches the entry point, I'll go out of this trade no matter what. That's the usual way of people, retail trader, behaving here once uh, they, uh, they, 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 they come under attack here. Um, they, start to, uh, they start to make moves which do not correspond with their, with their strategy anymore. And this is one of the main reasons, since there will be the day when the market does not turn around anymore. And you're get, then you, you won't get stopped out, but you will probably get a margin call here. Since the moment here, um, the floating PL, in this case, minus here, if the loss um, gets big enough, and it's not that, um, I, mean, I mean, you're losing 60 pips, you just lost 11% of the account. Um, just imagine what happens if you're, if you're losing, let's say, 200 pips here, three times that much. So in this case here, this free margin starts to, to just, uh, yeah, uh, disappear somehow. It's just, it's just gone. And um, the moment will come when, when there will be the margin call. So if, if you do not um, um, use a stop here, the margin call will be, um, will be, um, 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 unavoidable. So there will be the margin call which will stop you out here and uh, this moment you will have something, um, you will have, have lost more than half of your account here with this one trade by just taking away the stop because you, you can't afford this. So how can you avoid it? I mean, I'm not saying that I, can, I can't avoid this, um, 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 or I can avoid this by, by using a smaller position size, but let's say there's a big difference um, if you lose 60 pips, if the if the floating PNL is minus 270 euros, or if it's five times higher here, um, and you you definitely agree, right? So there's a big big difference um, to this, and uh, yeah. So what what I wanna what I wanna tell is, or what it's what I wanna give you um, on your way here is the potential reason for um, this leverage profitability connection from the page before here. One second. For this one, for this chart, is uh, or comes down to psychological reasons. So the main reason is um, you're highly likely to uh, move away from your initial strategy since you're, yeah, since you're you're you you start to think about it in terms of of money, and uh, usually, I mean, if you ask someone who's trading the markets, you ask him, hey. Um, why do you trade? And most of the people answer, well, I want to make a lot of money. But the thing is, the most profitable and the most successful traders out there do not um, look at trading in terms of money, but look in terms of, uh, let's say, yeah, probably intellectual challenge or something. And um, the, the, the money here is just a byproduct. And um, that's one of the reasons why they say, hey, how can I avoid to make uh, a stupid mistake? By, for example, um, I'm doing, making a move here does, which does not correspond with my, with my strategy anymore. How can I avoid this? You can avoid this by reducing the position size. Or, let's put it a different way, you can um, um, reduce these chances by reducing the effective leverage you're using in your trading. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's exactly um, what's, uh, what, what this topic is about and why, and now here the cycle closes again, why this, um, this, this circular number 168 and uh, why the reduction of the default leverage here in the um, trading world from cyprotic brokers, but also from the FCA in this case, um, they came shortly after this, why this is highly welcomed and uh, why this increases the chances of retail traders to become profitable um, in the long run significantly. Yeah, and so um, that's it on this topic from my end. I hope you uh, enjoyed the webinar. If you have any questions, um, just let me know. Shoot me a mail or um, type them into the, the chat box. 
and um, then we'll talk again to each other tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. GMT. It will be um, on the YouTube channel from JFD Brokers. You have the chance to just uh, tune in there and, and listen to my thoughts on the markets. I, I'd really appreciate it and, and, and really look forward to it um, And um, if you, if you um, 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 tune in there. And uh, yeah, so that's it from my end. And um, I wish you a nice evening and uh, happy trading the next days. Let's see um, how the market reacted to, to the testimonial from Yellen. So initially there was no real big moves, but probably the market will come down a little. Um, S&P, Dow Jones, they look, look really, really stretched here. Um, but yeah, let's see. So uh, that will be topic of the morning meeting tomorrow. So um, have a nice evening and uh, see you there. Um, yeah, and uh, have a nice, have a nice, have a nice day. See you and bye bye.